Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to test out our Moonport resupply vessel and I've uh, downgraded the rocket that it was going to launch on. It was originally going to launch on a Nico 940X, X for the J2 engine, but since we got the upgraded J2, the J2S, which is uh, here by the way, um, I think yeah, I, I decided that we could probably go with uh, Nico 440 with uh, four NK33s on the outside as boosters, four NK43s on the core, and then the J2 stage. Um, that may be enough fuel, it may not be enough fuel. Uh, we will see. But as you can see, the J2 stage delivers quite a lot of the Delta V here, and so we're going to have to go relatively steeply, but then again, about 3,000 of that is for the transfer to the moon. So that's what it looks like. Pretty low thrust weight ratio at the start. And we do need to ignite the NK43s right at the start in order to make this work because otherwise there's not enough thrust. But uh, this allows for the rocket to be much cheaper. It's only 34,000 funds and uh, 20 days to build, which is excellent. The net result, what we actually transfer to the moon is a 15.6 ton vessel which um, then we'll have to use 800 meters per second of this fuel to get into orbit, but then can transfer the rest of the fuel to the station. And so we can use that to refuel, for instance, the lunar lander. So we want that fuel transferred. And then the rest of it is food, water, and oxygen. And if we put on an Apollo pod to see how much this really is, there we go, and then bring up TAC life support. We see that for three crew, the amount of food, water, and oxygen we have here is, uh, let's say, 180 days. Um, it's actually more food, but uh, that's all right. Uh, I think uh, we will eventually want to have water recycling on the station. I don't think we have a module like that yet. Uh, let's take a look at life support. We, we do have a greenhouse container. Uh, that doesn't have the textures right, and it's definitely not supported by RP0. We'll hold off on that. I'll need to do some patching on that, as well as on these uh, these parts, which I will eventually want to use, but we can't do it right now. I think I'm missing a configuration to resize them properly right now. So these Pathfinder parts and these Buffalo MSEVs will have to wait until they are resized to a Realism Overhaul standards. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I don't think we have the life support modules to do, well, let's see, that would be under utility, uh, to, recycle, uh, to recycle the water or anything like that. Mm. That's just a normal life support container. It'll be a TAC life support module that we're looking for. Nope, I don't think we have those yet. So anyway, eventually we will have those and we will have to rebalance what kind of supplies we send over. As it's got comms, it's got um, RCS ports, Erzine N204 obviously, make sure everything is correct there. It's got plenty of comms actually, power, it's got two big solar panels, and lights for docking. It's got uh, both docking ports, Apollo docking system and the uh, propellant only. So yeah, I think I've shown this before, but I changed the rocket it's launching on, so it's a little bit more efficient. Okay. So that's all set. Let's uh, build one of those. We've already got a mission on its way, by the way. We've got the lunar lander on its way. We'll build one of, we'll, we will build one of these, and then we will also build another backup Orpheus 2 so that we can get set for crew rotation or any emergency that might occur. Another rocket that we're going to be building but not launching just yet is the transfer stage for the already built Mars class vessel. We've got this Mars class vessel here that was launched on Nico 1744 and it's just sitting there waiting for the Mars transfer window but it has no way to actually get to Mars. It's really more of a Mars station. It's got 2000 meters per second of Delta V in it in order to capture but it needs something to transfer it over. And to that end, we have a uh, stage here that we're going to try to dock with it. Now, this is going to be a 140-ton stage trying to dock to that vessel. And this stage could be used for other 
other launches to Mars as well. It's basically an S4B stage with a single J2S engine. And it's got a small propellant only docking port, at, oh sorry, Apollo docking system docking port at the top, nose cone that we will uh, detach. And then this stage here is an S2 stage. It's got, uh, it's got five J2S engines and I think they're configured to J2S. Let me double check that. And the Skylab texture is on a 10.1 meter thing and it burns for six minutes. So it's really, uh, it's very, very much an S2 stage. Um, same burn time, the same diameter, same engines. Uh, well, except they are J2S, so upgraded engines. So there's that stage. And then finally, we have the no normal Nico sort of setup. So uh, up, up there, it looks a lot like uh, Saturn V with a um, single J2 and then five J2s. But then here, we've got nine of the NK-43s at the center. And we've got 12 NK-33s uh, on the boosters. So uh, the two sets of six. And all the engines ignite at the same time at the start to give us our meager 1.15 thrust to weight ratio. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we're gonna go. Um, currently, the fuel is locked in the S4B stage, the the top bit. And uh, well, it's it's mostly it's mostly hydrolox. But then we do have a bunch of these advanced Gemini lander engines and a tank here with Arizena N204 because we need 200, I've got 283 meters per second there to rendezvous with the Mars class vessel. So that's docking fuel and rendezvous fuel. The Mars class vessel will probably have to do some of that as well. Otherwise we've got 9,960, well we've got 9,967 9, meters per second minus that in order to get this to orbit. So it's reasonably tight. We probably can't lose any engines on this, taking a look at the thrust to weight ratios. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. And uh, yeah, with that I'll save. And 95,000 is pretty expensive. So, but it can potentially boost about 70 to 75 tons to Mars. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's a lot that we can send to Mars if uh, that payload is launched first and then this docks with it and then uh, pushes it out on transfer. It has about 3,800 meters per second to uh, transfer something to Mars with if it's a uh, 70 to 75 ton payload. Okay, so let's build one. Also, it's nice that it's actually weighs less than the Saturn V. Saturn V was coming in around 3,000 tons. This is 2,726. So that's good too. Okay, here we are with Valentina and the Lunar Lander Light. I've unlocked the tanks and we've got 4,814 meters per second, which is a lot, but of course it is supposed to be able to land on the moon and then take off again from the moon. And yep, our current orbit is indecisive. So let's just go into Lunar SOI and see what happens. We do need to make sure Valentina rendezvous with the station within five days or Valentina has got to be in trouble. So that is the thing. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI and we're not going to spare any expense as far as Delta V is concerned getting a rendezvous with the station. And so we're going to do a maneuver here where our descending node was and that will be 132.2 meters per second and then we're going to do an orbital burn until we get a good closest approach distance and at that point we will wait until the closest approach and then uh, adjust our relative velocity to the station. So that is the idea. Here's moon port 1 and let's proceed to that node. Everything else seems to be alright and yep, electric charge is balanced yeah, we are full up on the carbon dioxide waste and wastewater. We might want to do something about the the lander's waste capacity later on. Fuel seems settled. Ignition. Now our relative inclination is dropping. Well, that should be good enough anyway. Let's head on to 
our tangency point where we touch the orbit of our target which is right there and then we'll start making the orbital burn and getting into orbit this is a nifty little vessel when you think about it yep could get some serious mileage out of it I mean when it comes to like moons with like Phobos and Deimos it could go between them quite easily think about that if you have a base on both of Mars's moons this could be just the thing to go between them. Trouble is, you can't really refuel this at Mars, because it's got aerosene and N204 instead of like methane and oxygen. Okay, 5.5 uh, kilometers for a start is not bad. Let's go over there and we'll make up the difference. You can still see that there's a big gap, but this allows us to rendezvous after one orbit, three hours. That's pretty good. Okay, I think it's time to flip around. Let me, uh, let me, yeah, I guess we'll just have to go like this. Uh, control from here, and then it's going to flip, which will also mess up our closest approach distance, but very sedate flip. That's very good. Shows that the RCS thrusters aren't overpowered. Only one set though. They're they're on the center of mass basically. That may or may not bite us if it's, uh, if it's somehow unbalanced. Okay, we're on a fairly close approach vector. I think it's prudent to take the solar panels in at this point because yeah they sort of stick out otherwise and of course we've got plenty of electric charge for the time being we need to go for one of the propellant only docking ports on the station we can see that uh, Orpheus 2 is right there trying to figure out where to target might need to get closer that's an Apollo docking system we might be closing in a little bit fast here Trying to make sure I sidestep it here. I think that's an all right orientation to dock at. Upside down from this this camera view, but good otherwise. Okay, uh, getting there on lining up here. Well, I can confirm that with this fuel load at least, it's not hard to maneuver this with the thrusters we've got. Okay, and docking. Pretty smooth, pretty smooth. Okay, and do we have enough to fill it up is a good question. Um, that's food, water, and oxygen. No, not really. Well, we've conveniently got a lunar supply mission that's supposed to come over here and deliver more Arizine and N204 anyway, so why bother taking stuff out of the station? As uh, I hope it's just quick saving here. Well, it was doing something. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's not deplete the station fuel at all, or like take some out of here, no. Let's just uh, send our resupply mission over. And when is it going to be built? Uh, just another 15 days. So we can time warp to that. Otherwise, Valentina is safe, and that's the most important thing. Okay, here we go. It looks like another nighttime launch. 
And again, we're going to light the NK33s and 43s on the ground. And this should be interesting. So, without further ado, ignition. And launch. Up it goes. It's uh, got a low thrust weight ratio, remember. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. The PID controller change is annoying me. It's not really turning this as fast as I would like. But I'll put up with it for uh, less wiggles. Okay. Separation. And boosters are off. We're proceeding just on the NK 43s. I think it'd be prudent to keep the fairings until after we switch to the next stage. They're not very heavy fairings anyway because they're small. Okay, separation. Separation. And ignition. Man, I hate that lag. Alright. J2 is on. Fairing set. And that's good. Okay, we might need some more pitch. I didn't really put too much thrust to weight ratio of this stage. We probably have more communication on this than we strictly need. Well, we'll go with it for now. We do have the right RCS fuel, that's important. Alright, getting closer to orbit, we could potentially have quite a tight orbit at 164 kilometers, which would be good. I'm curious as to why it's not reading the stage delta V properly. It's not reading any delta V properly, actually. The upper stage is also not reading... Oh, it's probably because of this weird way I've put the control cores inside this area. Actually, let's lock the payload's fuel so that its thrusters don't fire when we maneuver. And that's good enough. I probably should have shut down a little bit earlier. 203 by 165. Turn Smart ESS off. Once the program lets me. And I'll plot for the moon. Okay, I'm less concerned about preserving an actual free return. I mean, not, not necessarily a tight free return. I just need to get over to the moon, and we've got a periapsis there of 103 kilometers. If we take a look at the approach, it's not exactly in line with the station, but it shouldn't be too hard to correct. Where is the station? There we are. Um, actually, the descending node right there is basically right at where we touch the orbit so I guess we'll do uh, the inclination correction and orbit at the same time unless we can do something from out there to make it a little bit easier but since the node is right there that seems less likely we'll see anyway let's take care of the main transfer burn first and see how that shapes up we really need to get down to some serious sciencing though Feel like we're not doing enough of that. As far as tech queued, we've got we've got tech queued still, so it's not like we're leaving the queue empty or anything, but still. Alright. RCS on. Oh, come on. 
Okay, ignition. Just about right on Delta V. It's going to be a little bit hard for me to actually shut this down at the right timing. I might just let it burn out. Ah, good bet. Alright, so 10 more meters per second. And just leave the throttle up and let the RCS do it. Actually, what we should do is leave this stage on a crash course with the moon and use the payload to burn past to make sure it has a periapsis. Okay, getting really close to having that periapsis, so... Let's uh, shut it down right there, that's pretty darn convincing. Okay, and let's separate. Oh, no, no, no. Separate. Uh-oh. No connection. Oh, no. Ah, uh, these stupid cores with not any electric charge. Man. Well, we could send up a mission to fix this up, but it'll probably be cheaper and quicker just to launch another one. I think I'll probably have to do that next time, but before I forget, let's go back to the VAB, get some electric charge in here, got everything else, and uh, yeah. Well, this, uh, well actually, yeah, we can't really revive this, I forgot. We're on a crash course with the moon. <laughs> so this is going to auto-dispose of itself. This isn't uh, stuck in uh, low Earth orbit, I Temporarily slipped my mind that uh, we deliberately put this on a crash course with the moon here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be automatically disposed of. Shame. Unless... No, let's not do a weird sort of uh, maneuver with the lunar lander to capture this or something. That would be... Bad. No, no. I don't want to put anybody in danger. Let's just go back to the space center and forget this happened. Okay, so here we go. Remove all tanks, show you why. And pretty much any electric charge will do. I put those large solar panels on. Um, it's not going to be too bad, but I'll put 15,000 just for good measure. And the rest will be Arizine N204. And uh, I think that's the mix that's suited for these engines. Right. Okay. Let's back it up. And save. And we will build one of these. But we'll have to wait until the next episode to actually launch it. So we'll do that next time. And we'll res uh, set up our resupply system. Uh, that It was an interesting test this time. But uh, yeah. After that... Well, there's probably a lot of other moon stuff. We've got 133 days until the Jupiter transfer window. And we could get a few rockets built in that time, because considering this takes 21 days, we could do uh, quite a few more moon missions before we have to go interplanetary again. Yep. So, uh, look forward to that next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.